The Fishing News is brought to you by Shoreline Insurance Agency. Win the incredible Steigercraft, Evinrude, Rude, Lorance Grand Prize Boat Package, and more in the Fisherman's 2018 Dream Boat Fishing Challenge. Get the details at thefisherman.com. Wow, what a fall season we're having if you can get out in between the gales. I mean, the fish are there, but this wind and the cold and today snow, the good news is after this system passes, things will calm down and the weekend is looking very fishable with Sunday looking like the best bet. If you're not going to be out on the water, stop down at Steigercraft's Open House and Factory Tour this Saturday and Sunday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. each day. Meet with engine and electronic reps, talk fishing with fishermen, staffers Fred Galafaro and Captain John Raguzzo, and take advantage of factory and dealer incentives. You can also grab a free breakfast or lunch and a free Steigercraft t-shirt. Register by calling 631-286-2136 or by email. Steigercraft is located in Bellport, Long Island. On the east end, there is some great blackfish action on the North Fork. Nancy Ann Charters out of Orient sent this big tog photo. Same story out of Montauk. Blackfish like this one by Joe Kuhn and some nice cod in the mix as well, like the one Chris Spies is holding up. Now let's get the latest from Shinnecock with Mike Dean. Thanks, Tim. Veterans Day weekend was awesome. I want to thank all the vets for their service, dedication, and sacrifice to defend our way of life and freedom. Uh, the small schoolies uh, to just about keeper size are all over the beach and the rips and the sandbars in close. Outgoing tides seem to work, be a little more productive than incoming, but they were still there on incoming. Uh, I caught about 30 fish in two hours on Sunday, which is just amazing. Tog and sea bass bite continues on the wrecks. Uh, a lot of the sea bass bigger than some of the fish being, stripers being brought in off the beach. In deeper water, guys trolling bunker spoons, mojos, uh, also diamond jigging, bringing up a lot of really nice 30, 40 pound class fish. Um, again, it's diving. There's definitely some bigger baits around, adult bunker out there, but right at the shoreline, it's all about the sand eels. Um, hopefully they're gonna stick around. I think they will. Water temperatures should remain mid 50s, low 50s, and uh, I think we still have a few good weeks of fishing, so don't pack that gear away just yet. Have fun, catch them up. The word from Fire Island, there's lots of school bass on the outside being jigged up, mostly small fish, but Rich Figular managed to find this nice 20 pounder in the mix. There are also some bluefish around, like this one caught by Renee, also on Rich's boat. Captain Al Lorenzetti said there's a few bass being taken on plugs inside the inlet, but be careful around the inlet, it's been pretty bad lately. Now let's go to Oceanside and check in with Joey Leggio. Thank you, Tim. Report out of Deb's Inlet. Bass are there, guys. I mean, there's all different sizes right now. We have the jig bite going on. You're seeing the stripers on the surface, under the birds, on the bottom. You're marking sand hills. You're also we're marking uh, lots of schools of bunker deep, and the bass are on there too. And, you know, check out your machine. You're going to see a big uh, red blotch like so, and then you'll see all those little arches all around that, that bait, you know. Throw the jigs down there, troll the mojos, you know, the fish are there. Sunday, I did a half day for uh, Jim and his buddy. <clears throat> we headed out, started trolling Long Beach area, instant fish. We had our three fish limit right away. We were finished by 10 a.m. Uh, the guys wanted to try a little black fishing, headed over to the reef, jumped on the uh, AB reef for a little bit, and we had a few keeper blackfish, I believe three or four keeper blackfish, and a lot of shorts. Blackfish has been a little tough on that AB reef. It's not like it normally is, but uh, hopefully that will change. On Monday, I had out Ari, Avi, and Nick. The guys strictly wanted to jig bass, and that was it. So we pulled out the inlet, and there were the birds. So right away, we got in some fish. The fish were small, you know, not really big. Those little typical 18 to 24-inch stripers. But the guys were having a blast. Drove down a little bit. We found a nice school of bunker deep. The guys started casting the spro bucktails down deep. And boom, two beautiful 18 to 20 pounders came up out of that school. And again, some smaller fish. The guys really didn't want to troll, but I persuaded them, and I got them to troll for a little bit. We did a one-hour troll. We were using the 24-ounce uh, single mojos, like this one right here. I don't know if you can see that in the chartreuse. One this color, one white, trolling these on the braid, and uh, we had four more fish on the troll. Again, all four fish on the troll were bigger, and were also all keepers as well. Uh, the troll seems to be you know, producing the bigger fish. Not saying you're not going to get a big one on the jig. Of course you will. I believe on that day there was also a 51 and a half pound to court right where we were trolling uh, that was waiting at Bay Park Fishing Station. So that's a beautiful fish. Congratulations to those guys on that cow bass. Um, on Sunday also, a client of mine, I've been taken out. 
went on his own with his two boys, trolling, had a blast. They caught a bunch of fish on the jigs on the way in. On the mojo, they were rewarded with a 30 plus pound striper. Awesome job, guys. Very proud of you guys. And uh, that's basically it. There's really not much more to say, but the, uh, the bass are there. So that's good. Top water, mid water, and of course the bottom. No matter where you, what you do, you're going to catch them. Jigging, bucktailing, trolling, spoons, mojos, swimming plugs, and umbrella jigs are all catching. And just your diamond jig, yo yo, casting. Whatever it may be, whatever you want to do, it's working all, you know, all different ways of fishing is working. No report from News 12 meteorologist Rich Van Olen because he's kind of busy tracking the potential snow for today. But he did send me a few shots from this past week. He took a trip to Orient where his friend Billy had this nice big tog. And here's his other buddy, Rob, with another nice tog. He also had some success fishing close to home off of Long Beach using a white mojo. And his friend Gary connected with this nice 15-pound bass. Let's check in with Luke Feeney from Sheep's Head Bay. Monday was some of the best weather conditions I've ever had while fishing the fall in my entire life. There was not a lick of wind all day, the seas were flat calm, and the temperatures were a little cold but still very nice and enjoyable. We headed straight out to the southwest corner of the Atlantic Beach Reef in about 65 to 75 feet of water, and the plan was to troll bunker spoons for those nice bass all day long. We got out there around 7.30 in the middle of the incoming tide, and it was a little slow for the first hour and a half to two hours of the troll. It was still the middle of the incoming, not much was going on. We had about three to four fish, and our biggest was around 30 to 32 pounds at that time. The action wasn't that great yet. We weren't marking a lot of bait. There weren't a lot of birds. There just wasn't a lot going on. And I had those spoons diving pretty deep, by the way, also about 55 to 60 feet is my estimate. But as soon as 11, 1130 rolled around and that outgoing tide switched, the bite went off. I couldn't even get two spoons out before one was getting hit. We totaled around 30 hookups and 28 fish landed, with our biggest being around 35 pounds. I talked to some other boats out there that day, and they said nobody really located those 50 pound plus class fish. I guess maybe they weren't schooling that day. And also something I noticed is that on the outgoing tide, they bit better when we were trolling southeast, and on the incoming tide, they bit better when we were trolling west. Either way, when we were going with the tide, they seemed to bite better. Something you should try if you're not getting bites going one direction, maybe try trolling the other direction to improve your odds. The bass jig bite should be really good in a few weeks here while we go through December, and the big bass should move down the coast a little bit, and that herring should move in and that small bait. You can get some nice bass on the diamond jig, that's typically the thing to do in December before the season closes, and that could be a lot of fun with some nice fish in the mix. And black fishing has still been very good from what I understand. The problem has been the weather has been really poor, and most guys, when we get a nice day that's fishable, have been choosing to go after the bass while they're still here. But the people that I know that have tar been targeting blackfish have been doing very well on uh, many of the offshore spots like the Rockway Reef, Atlantic Beach Reef, 17 Fathoms, Mud Buoy, and the New Bottom, all that nice broken up bottom that's a little further offshore. People have do, been doing very well. And those schoolie bass that were inshore have moved out to the ocean side. I've seen them when I was coming back from the Atlantic Beach Reef. They're under those tight patches of birds on nice small bait. Anything you throw in there that's nice and small, a bucktail, a popper, you're almost guaranteed to hit every time if you're on those, bunk, if you're on those tight patches of birds. But that's where those schoolie fish in the bay went. They're all out on the ocean now chasing that bait. From Staten Island and Raritan Bay Area, let's get the latest from Mike Sentry, a.k.a. Mike Mangawell. Thanks, Tim. Hey, fishermen. Well, what can I say? Striped bass is definitely on the way. Fished on Monday uh, out in the Raritan Bay for striped bass trolling. Let me tell you something. I was solo. Ended up catching 21 bass. I lost four on the port side. Uh, hook came out. I was trolling white mojos and also white bunker spoons. A lot of people out there. I don't follow the crowd. So make your own path, guys. Follow the fish. And stick to it. These striped bass will be here to uh, the mid-December. Water temperatures are moderate and uh, not looking to uh, drop anytime soon. The school is still coming down. It's not like they're here now disappearing in a few days. Remember all those fish that came through the spring go up north for the south. Now they're coming back down for the south so you know, it's just a matter of time before even bigger fish arrive. So the bigger fish, let them go so they can grow. Uh, next year's population. Also, the large breeders produce a lot of eggs. So definitely practice catch and release. Well, here's some pictures. And um, as you can tell, I'm extremely tired. Been fishing quite a bit. A little bit too much. But I guess, gotta do it. Season ends, then you'd be wishing you could have, would have. 
So fishermen, get out there, have some fun. On the North Shore, we have Aaron, who just completed the battery change on his smoke detector. Aaron, what do you got? Schoolies are everywhere. Occasional keepers are in the surf. Blackfish, shad, and bluefish are around too. The peanut bunker and full-size bunker are still here, which is leaving the schoolies no reason to leave, along with the full-size uh, stripers. Shad have came in and are eating the peanut bunker, and schoolies are eating peanut bunker, and blues are still around eating peanut bunker. Who knows how long they will be around, but I would say get out and fish for them. Top water, bucktails, anything like that seems to be catching them, but bucktails with the trailer seem to be catching the bigger fish. Till next week. Further east on the North Shore, we have Peter Tarnowski with an update. Thanks, Tim. This week I'll be covering the bass bite on the South Shore where the action continues to be nonstop. I went out with Captain Jerry Vidiello of Alexis Lana Fishing Charters where we limited out another two hours during the morning bite. We were using diamond jigs in about 50 to 70 feet of water. Uh, we started off the week over by Robert Moses. Later in the week, the bite was hotter over by Jones Beach as the fish continue to move west. I did hear that there are two large bodies of fish coming in from the east, so that should keep the fishing busy through the end of November. If you're ever down by Captree State Park, definitely look for Alexis Lana Fishing. It's a great boat, a lot of room, and Captain Jerry Vidiello definitely gets you on the fish. He's got a great crew as well that'll help you keep your lines in the water. Thanks. Back to you, Tim. Fisherman Senior Editor Fred Galafaro has the latest from the surf. Hey, thanks, Tim. And yes, yeah, still uh, the story's lots of small stripers uh, down the south shore, on the east end, up on the north shore, uh, down the south shore east end, they're on sand eels, up on the north shore, they're on peanut bunker, uh, you know, blitz fishing at times, other times just picking fish here and there. And every now and then somebody gets a... Uh, a decent fish, you know, maybe up into the teens. Haven't heard of any big fish on the beach in a couple of weeks. Uh, there was uh, Monday Monday afternoon, uh, I saw a decent fish come off of uh, uh, Robert Moses, and also uh, on Tuesday at Democrat, there was a fish, looked about 18 pounds. So there's a few of them mixed in, but you're talking about a couple of fish out of hundreds of small fish being caught and a lot of guys fishing. Uh, this is good news for the fishery. I mean, you know, down the road, we've got all these small fish coming up. Uh, hopefully, we're able to protect them and uh, they get to be decent size. But right now, you know, make the most of these small fish. I know I sound like a broken record, but if you drop down to lighter tackle when possible, I know we've had a lot of rough weather, a lot of wind, uh, a lot of sweep in the surf. But when you get the right conditions, drop down to light tackle. You can have a ball with those small fish. They're really a lot of fun. Um, I mean, I'm down to like a six-foot rod when the conditions are right, but a seven-foot rod, 10-pound braided line, and, uh, you know, bucktail stick to single-hook lures, you know, whether it's a small uh, diamond jig with a tube or a tin, or uh, if you want to fish plugs, use the, uh, use the inline hooks, switch out the trebles. Uh, bucktails, you know, real easy. Uh, that's the way I like to go. You get the fish up next to you, just grab the head of the bucktail, give it a twist and the fish is gone. You don't even have to handle them. So do that, have some fun with them. Uh, the North Shore, you know, there's a lot of days, uh, I just saw a great video from Brian Speckles uh, up in the North Shore Harbors, just one fish after another under really calm, uh, protected conditions. So, you know, look around, have fun with them. The season's gonna be over before you know it. Take advantage of it. Till next week, Fred Golifaro here for thefisherman.com. Upcoming events. September 17th through the 18th, it's the Steigercraft Open House and Factory Tour. November 24th is the Lindenhurst Fall Fishing Flea Market. If you'd like to be part of our weekly video fishing forecasts, we're looking for social media savvy anglers for hyperlocal reporting from around the New York, Metro, and Long Island area. So if you're a captain, a tackle shop, or just an avid angler, contact me at libayrat at gmail.com. For links and more information, be sure to check out the video's description on YouTube. Remember, like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and be a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine to be part of the Dreamboat Contest. Get out there, catch them up. This is Tim C. Smith for thefisherman.com.